Hello guys and girls, welcome to another video, Jonathan Heath here. Uh, today we are drawing SCP-999. And <clears throat> it's called the Tickle Monster and it's a safe class, meaning it's not a dangerous SCP in no way. And this one was requested by Sunfall Art. So thank you for requesting and I hope you like what we're gonna do here. I've actually drawn this SCP before in uh, with an ink pencil. So this is gonna be a bit different with the graphite, more detail, stuff like that. It's gonna be quite nice, I think. Um, anyways, this SCP, as I said, it's a safe class. It doesn't hurt anyone. It's a very beneficial SCP. Make you feel good when you're around it. It's like a pet almost. It's a blob of a gelatinous jelly. Um, orange blob, more or less. Really cute. And I didn't know this, but I looked up some information about the, how it came to be, this blob. And it's part of like Scarlet King's seventh child. So cultists who, who were worshipping Scarlet King. And I'm not gonna go into explaining Scarlet King this video. Uh, it's gonna be too long. I'll do a separate video on that in the future. And the seventh child was born to be like that apocalypse world ending SAP. But instead it turned out to be a really cute and friendly SAP uh, trying to like defeat its six other siblings. Uh, it's really, really cute in that concept, like this blob supposed to be defeating all the other ones. I uh, really like that concept. Uh, and the reason it turned out to be friendly was because the wife had some different she had different plans, if I got that correctly, like she wasn't a fan of the Scarlet King. Um, so that's basically it. And my concept here is, as you can see, uh, hand holding this cute little um, blob. And His texture is kind of like peanut butter, but I want to make him a little bit more gooey, gooey like. So you can hold him, he's not that gooey. His, his texture is good enough that you can hold him without it just melting. Uh, something like this. Thinking how we do the shading on this one. We're gonna be making him very translucent. Um, not very, very, but I want him to be kind of slimy. Um, let's see how we do this. Like peanut butter has a weird not that interesting texture, so I think slime would be the way to go with this one. Uh, 
So it's being held up by this hand. I don't know whose hand it is, maybe some... Maybe some D-class, I don't know. So give the hand some clothes maybe, like so. And yeah, thank you Soundfall Art for requesting this one. It's uh, nice to be drawing some cute recipes. Not just horrible hellhound mutant creatures, you know? So, it's been around seven days, seven, eight days since I did an SAP, so it's about time we did another one. to smoothen out all the lines here. We have a very nice workflow creating these. So we're just gonna be sticking to that. And we're not thinking about highlights at all at this stage, just getting a nice even base to work with here. And I'm trying to use my own hand here as a guide for drawing this hand as well. And we're gonna be careful with the hand because I don't want to give it too much detail or highlights because it's not the focus of the drawing. The focus is the blob, blobby blob. So maybe it's gripping here as well. Do this one more time like this with the stone pan. Get a real even, nice base going here. And we're gonna do a rim light on this little guy. Uh, can really add a lot to the feeling of slime by adding a rim light. That's what we're going for here. Maybe it's dripping here as well. Like so. Now we work a bit more on the values. He's gonna have really cartoonish eyes, big highlights. Bigger. Want him to look, look a bit happy. Yeah, we're not gonna give him a open mouth. We're gonna leave it like this. So quite a weird origin for an SAP for such a cute such a cute recipe, it sure has a very messed up origin. So, learning about origin made me like this recipe even more. It's such a oddball, they didn't have to add that. 
they didn't have to add like where does it come from because m most SCPs don't have that, like the shy guy. No one questions where he's from, like it's just it's just creature. No one really cares where where he's from, how he was made. So it's interesting that I gave this guy a little bit more detail on his background. Yeah, I'm talking about cute things, my cat. She's not as paranoid anymore when I draw. She's quite used to this now, me being in my office and drawing and she just, she knows that I'll come back, I won't just disappear when the door closes. And she's really cute because when I've done these videos and I open the door, she's sitting right outside. So maybe she's listening to my voice or I don't know what she's doing. She's such a cute little girl. Cutie pie. So yeah. Um, remember guys to like, subscribe and leave your comment. What SAP do you want me to draw after this one? Maybe there's stuff going like so as well, creeping across his body. Maybe a big drop here. To make it look like it's runny, kinda. So yeah, life with a cat is super fun. I really, really am a fan of it. Really enjoy being cat owner. Although she can be a pain in the ass sometimes, she. It's just the cuddliest little thing. Like so maybe. See the hand here, as I said. Since it's quite deep inside the jelly, it's not going to be catching a lot of that light. Um, so we're not going to put too much detail on it. Let's see, let's use my hand as a reference here as well. And for this piece, I did a little quick sketch. I felt I needed a bit of a guidance, the hand placement, the texture, stuff like that made myself a little reference to go by <clears throat> to the folds here on the fingers like so and yeah thank you guys so much for the views on my latest uh, SAP video the hellhound drawing has like 300 views which is uh, so much. I have videos that are like mon months old and um, they don't even have 200 views, so thank you. And um, Almost looks like a leg here. Uh, 
just slowly working on the values. Go through with this again. We have some lines here that I want to remove, like so. And I think the values look quite nice now. So I think we're going to start working on the silhouette for this little guy. Clean up the silhouette from all this, uh, these messy lines. Let's get straight to it here. I was actually gonna record a video yesterday, but unfortunately my voice said no, nah, so I couldn't do that. So here we are today, doing this little creature. So more on this creature like it's a very beneficial SAP it can roam the facilities freely um, it can cure like depression if you have that anxiety um, if you're worried about something it can fix that like emotional support, I guess this SAP is. Like so. And I was thinking about if I should add a hand or not, but when I think about this SAP, I just wanna feel the texture kinda, like I wanna feel, feel it in my hand. You know, and so I, ma I imagine this is my hand touching the cute little SP. It has these Kirby eyes, very cartoonish, very cuteish. Like so. And we're gonna have to be very precise with our highlights on this one because we want it to look very glossy. So, gonna have to be precise with our highlights. Add some rim light to this little guy. And I'm trying to work on the line art, the last thing we do. Because as you guys know, who's followed me for a long time, I don't appreciate doing line art that much, really. Yes. Not when it comes to traditional art. Um, so just trying to save that for the final step. We should be good. And as you can see, it's slowly taking shape here now. When we add these highlights, it really comes to life, like really pops. You have to be really sparse with the uh, with white and with, with black. Try to not use the blackest of blacks and white whitest of whites. Just use it when you absolutely need to. Maybe we give this this background groups some uh, highlights as well. And this one it's a bit too dark this little fellow here. And as you guys know, I like adding bits and pieces here and there. It 
texture. But I don't know for this one, I think we're gonna go with a more smooth, um, smooth feel for this one. I want like a droop going over his hand as well. Something like this. And maybe here near the mouth, just like some bigger highlights. And I, there's a lot of fan art for this little guy, and a lot of the fan art is just him alone, standing alone. So I thought it would be fun to add like a hand touching him. Um, A drooping here as well. I think we chill with the droopy droopiness a bit, just chill out with that. And we try and add more rim light here and there. So, here to separate the arm from the body. Where do we want the rim light? Here. Here we want one. Like so maybe we give a little rim light here as well. And this doesn't make sense here actually. That's that's more bounce light, I think. Might catch some rim light here. course if the creature catches it the hand will also catch it so the thumb here maybe a little bit inside here too much same with the, the arm catching some rim light Alright, I think we're quite happy with this. Now we're gonna start filling in some of these lines. And as you know, I'm quite... It takes quite a lot of focus for me to do lines, so... If I go silent for a little minute here, it's uh, something you don't want to mess up. Like this. I don't like how the hand is kind of connecting with the slime here. I want it to be, yeah, like this, like. That's not the most anatomically correct hand. But it's good enough. And um We're gonna continue here with the lines.
trying to think about my hand placement here so I don't cover up the, the whole drawing and uh, get graphite all over my hand. Yeah, we're slowly getting there, um, just filling in the lines here. Uh, gonna be filling in the values again as we <coughs> start to come to the end on this line art part. Like so, fill in this background group. Well, and we're gonna give the hand here as well some some lines. Um, here will look connected to the hand like so sections of the fingers here, the folds. All right. And now we can start filling in um, more values and details. Just like this. Like 
so. Just give each rim light here a little shadow, makes the effect stronger. about how we do the highlight here on the lips not sh quite sure yet but we'll figure that out as we go here fill in the eyes make them dark and nice has to be in darkness, it's background group. And we give it a bit of a gradient, so it's darker up here and lighter down here. Yeah, it's uh, nice. My cat doesn't scratch on the door anymore. She used to do that a lot when I recorded. And it didn't bother me really, but it's nice that she she's not as worried when I close the door. She understands that I don't disappear when the door closes, which is a uh, she starts to understand how things work here. She's around um, four months now. And she is growing quite fast. She's eating well, drinking well, sleeping well, pooping well, all that good stuff. All that stuff that a growing cat eats. Anyways, if you guys come this far into the video, uh, remember to subscribe, like, share the video, maybe leave a comment, I love interacting with you guys. Let's give this a bit more of a rim light effect. Catching some bounce light since it's a very big blob. This is like the biggest blob here. If you don't consider the head, like so. Just to break off that shape a bit, make it a bit more interesting to look at. And we are not gonna work more on the inner part of the hand because focus needs to be on the slime that's where I want your eyes to go yeah that, this looks better now like the slime was kind of connecting with the hand I did not like that much and the hand isn't anatomically correct like it sh should be bulging more here but that's fine you know I am um, once the lines are there there's not much you can do it's just it is what it is but I think the end result is gonna look quite nice because I like like the composition we have here, it's quite a nice, quite a nice composition, if I do say so myself. See the mouth here, like so. 
maybe he has like a double shin, I don't know. Give him a bit, bit of a texture. Of course he's not gonna be super super smooth. Catching some rim light here as well. So now we're done with the big shapes and it's nice. We have a nice workflow here. We don't really have to work on the silhouette anymore. It's quite clear, quite nice. Just some tiny, tiny cleanups here and there. Just working more on the values, highlights, all that good stuff that really can make a difference in the drawing. Make a drawing go from good to great. Maybe give this double shin some, some more love. It's just a hint, just a hint something is going on there. Maybe this background here is catching some as well. It's not really, everything is gonna be very translucent on this little fellow. And we're not going with the peanut butter feel for this one, we are going with the slime feel. And I recently bought some slime for my son and he was ecstatic about that. He really loved playing around with that stuff. So. And I really like slime as well. But once in a blue moon, you know, I don't play with it. Maybe as much as other people do. I do enjoy watching like slime ASMR from time to time. Like those, you know, those really probably expensive slimes. Like there's a slime that looks like bricks. There's water slime, uh, like some Ghibli, like Spirited Away. Uh, Spirited Away slime. I don't know how they do these slimes, but they look so good. And like some, they look like candy. So you don't wanna keep these slimes near small children because they are gonna gulp that up. Um, and yeah, I think the water slime looks really cool. It's You'd think it just look like transparent uh, slime, but it has that kind of watery look to it. It's kind of hard to explain. Just just Google water slime, then come back to this video and tell me what you thought. I think it looks really amazing. It's one of my favorite slimes to, to look at. And I love when they like push stuff in, like small balls or stars or, you know, to make it more, give it even more texture. All right. Talking about texture, we are now going into the final part of this drawing. We're doing the stomp smooth, smoothing out all the values we have here. And and after that, we'll see where we go. Like I said, I don't wanna add too much texture to this because 
a slime. If you have too much texture, it might take away from that slime feeling. If you have too much, suddenly you have something completely different, some different material. So, and like material feel and glossiness is something you learn as you draw. The more you draw, the more you learn to to understand how light and materials work. this going through all these parts smoothing in out all this that we added and we can run through here on the hand as well just to smoothen out the hand and remove some of these sharp lines. They're too sharp because the, the hand is deep inside this slime creature. So I don't want I don't want the lines to be super strong. You know, something like this. Now we try to work out all all the areas where there, maybe there's uh, some white uh, parts that shouldn't be white that we can go through now. Uh, like we had a part here that's too white for no reason. So we covered that up. And I want this area here to be quite white because I want the focus to be near the face. Maybe we give the mouth a little highlight down here as well. Just to make the mouth super cute, bubbly, bubbly, cute mouth. And yeah, we are definitely gonna be doing this for the next drawings as well. We are gonna save the line art for last. So I really appreciated this this uh, drawing, creating this little fellow. I think I appreciate doing all these, but of course you're gonna have some that you like more than others. And I think this one, is on my top list. I really really like it. Maybe it's because it's all all these highlights and I really like adding highlights. Maybe that's why I, I'm a big fan of these. Probably. And yeah, I haven't been uploading for like a week, seven days, I think. And it's just, I've been trying to figure out what I should draw. I was thinking about doing a compilation of all the Spirited Away drawings I've done. But I am i don't really want to do compilations. I want to create new stuff, you know, for you guys to see, not compilations. I know other channels who've created new stuff. In the past, they were like solely now focusing on compilations of their old contents, which I think is weird, like... kind of kills your creativity when you're rehashing uh, content. And that's just my opinion, but... And I think rehashing content is never good. I'm 
tried it in the past with digital painting where there's been pieces that I've been happy with. Maybe I've made them several, several years ago. And then like, maybe I should redo this one. Maybe I should make it better. And I work on it a bit. Then I'm done. And then I compare the old version to the new one. And the old version is better, so. And I see that with many artists. Like they've done, done a rehashed version of an old artwork and then, oh. It was good the way it was, you know, you should let some things be. Not try and improve them. And like that time that you rehashed your content, maybe you could have spent on creating something new. And trust me when I say it, I've rehashed and tried recreating old artwork so many times, and it's just not worth. It's not worth it. But that's just my opinion. If you have a different point of view of this, I'd love to hear that. Uh, I follow a lot of art groups on Instagram and uh, Facebook, YouTube as well, and that's what I've been seeing at least, many artists realizing they should have just let their old art be. Like so. Filling in some of these. The thumb here we are filling in, of course, because it's not covered by the slime. But the inner hand, we're gonna let that be. And I think the hand, we're gonna give that some pores, some dots and pieces. Same with the, the arm texture on the, the sleeve, I think that's the word sleeve for the arm sleeve. As you guys know English is not my native language so sometimes when I speak I can have a hard time finding the words for say but doesn't happen a lot okay as I said yeah we, before we go to the texture I just want to fill in some parts here my perfectionist persona telling me we're not done it has to be a certain way so I won't be able to sleep at night I'll be thinking about the details. Why did I put that there? Or why did I skip that part? Or stuff like that. Yeah, give this. Give this shirt some texture. Same here. Just because some part of the drawing is smooth doesn't mean. All the parts have to be. Let me go through my hand here again for texture purpose. And yeah, the slime is kind of casting a shadow on the hand here. Slight, slight shadow. Give this a bit of a shadow here on the rim light, just to make it really big contrast. So you, it's easy for the eye to see where the slime begins and where the hand, 
when the hand starts. You know. Like so. Give the hand some pores. Something I like doing, if you followed me for some time, you know that I like adding a little line near my highlights. It's a way to make it more effectful. The highlights even more effectful and just focus the highlight. Because when you do erase, maybe you erase parts that wasn't meant to be erased, or you erase too much. So it's a good way to refocus the highlights. And if you think I'm just talking out of my pants and saying no, that's not how it works or what is he talking about, then that's fair because I'm no teacher, just talking from my own experience here, which I love to share. Okay, you see, now it's starting to look more crisp by adding this line here near the highlights. We make it look more crisp, sharp, focused, all that good stuff. Let's see. And you might even see some new features as you do that. I saw that we need a little dim light there and a little shadow here. And here as well, I want this rim light to go near that arm. Maybe we connect these parts like so. Up just a little bit. Same here, just a little bit. Keep saying that just a little bit, not too much. That's something I live by when it comes to art. Just don't do any any big strokes, just take your time. get the results you want eventually. Do we do a little highlight here because this part is kind of kind of big. So we've been drawing for 54 minutes now and I think we're coming up to the end of this cute little creature and remember to like subscribe follow me for more SAP content more amazing drawing content um, I do ink drawings I do graphite drawings um, not comfortable with color not in the traditional sense. When it comes to digital art, I'm quite comfortable. But for my YouTube channel, we're gonna keep it black and white. Actually, I posted a lot of digital art in the beginning when I started this channel, when I started to upload stuff. I did some 
speed paintings in Photoshop. But I think I'm most comfortable drawing this way when it comes to YouTube at least. I just want to fix all the little details that are bothering me. Maybe some edges are too blurry. So make them sharper. Like here, for example, that's a bit too grayed out. And like so. Yeah, my my cat is getting a little impatient with me. Um, but she's just gonna have to wait until I finish drawing the little little rascal of a cat. She's run down a couple of my flower pots. She's bitten some flower leaves. Not poisonous, of course. Uh, she's run across the kitchen table. Yeah, she is the very definition of uh, like curiosity kill the cat. She is so curious. She has to follow me around wherever I go. I don't mind having a little tail. Give this head a bit of a thick line. It's a bit too thin for my liking. See the eyes. I think the eyes have a good, they have good value. And yeah, I'm gonna be uploading this tonight. I've tried to keep it that way. I draw, I post. Just wanna get it out as soon as possible for you guys to see. Um, because if I don't do that, it's easy for the videos to stack up and then, oops, when did I do that? What did I say in that video, etc., etc. It's easy to let time pass and then whoops, I should have uploaded that, but I forgot, you know, so it's better to just, just do it, just do it, like Shia LaBeouf said. All right. Maybe we give this a bit more, more love as well. Same with this, a bit of a thicker line. Same with the arm here. Because if you add a thick line somewhere, the other lines are gonna look too thin. So always keep that in mind, if you add something you have to take into account that you might have to add it to other places as well. Alright, we just clean up the silhouette. And then we're good to go. Thank you guys for watching. 
and see you in the next one. Bye bye.